And welcome to part 7, where we'll be covering how to add normal maps into our shader. Now once again, don't worry if you find the presentation a little hard to follow, it's just to get an idea of how things work. After the theory, we'll go ahead and write the shader line by line, explaining how it works in greater depth. You can then come back and watch the theory again for greater understanding, or you can download the presentation, the shader, and a text version of this tutorial in the source files. Normal Maps to achieve a realistic surface detail, we need to have the ability to add normal maps to our shader. Now I'm going to assume for the most part that you guys know what normal maps are and a general understanding of how they are used. We're going to be just covering how they work in shaders and how they work for adding them in, reacting to lighting and things like that. If you are unfamiliar with normal maps, then by all means you can jump over to Wikipedia, there are some great descriptions over there. You can also leave a comment underneath the series on unitycookie.com and I'll do my best to help you out. So a normal is what direction the vertex is facing and a normal map rotates these normals for each fragment to give the illusion of detail. The key words there is being rotates. We are using the normal map to actually rotate the vectors, not overwrite them. However, you can use what's called an object space normal map which will overwrite them. For now we are just going to be working with tangent space which is the most common. There is a complex formula for this on Wikipedia on how all of this works, but I would like to show you a simpler version to avoid confusion. When I was learning how to write normal maps, I studied that formula on Wikipedia trying to decipher it, figure it out, I ended up coming up with a simpler solution, but it took a lot of effort and it was um, very confusing to me actually reading that in comparison to just doing it a simpler way. So if you would like to learn more about that, um, and it will be on Wikipedia for you. Just do a search for normal maps. So let's take a look at how it works. To rotate the normals, we need a few things. We need the normal direction, and the normal direction is the direction of the normals. We need the tangent direction. And this is a vector at the tangent of the normal direction. Now by tangent, I mean at 90 degrees. Then we have a binormal, or it's also called a cotangent direction. And this is a vector at tangent to the tangent and normal direction. So this is 90 degrees to the um, to both of those. The normal direction would be z, the tangent would be x, and the binormal would be y. So we can use these to rotate the original normal around an axis. And once again, you can think of the fragment as pivot, and x equals tangent, y equals binormal, and z equals normal. Rotating around the normal axis is pointless. So that's why the normal map blue channel is 1 for no rotation and is not used in Unity at all. In fact, Unity stores normal maps in the alpha and green channels to save text to memory. Let's take a look at the code. Now there's a lot of new code for normal maps. Boom, there it is. So it's going to take a few pages. It's actually about 8 pages, I think, of breakdowns that I have for you. So we'll better get started. So let's start with the simplest. Let's start with the property. All right. Bump map, bump, and 2D. So this is just like our um, our texture map from um, 1 part 6, except instead of white, we're using the default value of bump. The default value of bump tells Unity it is a normal map, so it can convert it and place the red and green channels into the alpha and green channels respectively. Now we need to sample it so the shader can actually read the texture. So this is exactly the same as with our texture map. Except this time it's for a map. Remember the underscore st is there so that we can get the texture offset and scaling in our shader. Now we need a couple more semantics for the new data. Here is all the new semantics. We only have the built-in normal and tangent vectors, so we'll have to calculate the binormal ourselves. We'll need to grab in the tangent, and we'll need to output the tangent, the normal, and the binormal to the fragment shader. So we, need, we don't have binormal by default, we have normal and tangent, um, but we need to calculate that binormal. So let's take a look at some new lines in the Vertex program. These are going to be the new lines. Now you can see here that normal world is exactly the same as before with the, with the normal direction, so we're going to ignore that line. But let's take a look at the other two. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. What we're doing is we're multiplying the object to world matrix by our tangent direction to get the world space tangent direction. That is fairly straightforward. The rest of this is just making it work. You can ignore the things like the float 3s and float 4s. I don't technically need some of those. I just use them to, when working with mine, I find it works a little better. It's a little less buggy. And it's just an old habit of mine. 
So we just look at the core fundamentals there. We have, we have the normalized function, so we're normalizing between 0 and 1. We are then using the multiply function to multiply the object to world matrix by the tangent. And the tangent is only a um, 3 vector, so it's only a float 3. So we need to add in that fourth component as just 0, just temporarily. And then we'll truncate it back down to 3. Now the binding wall is a little new. We're using a cross product. So the cross product takes two vectors and returns a new vector at tangent to both vectors. Multiplying it by v.tangent w will give us the correct vector length. Alright, so that's pretty straightforward. It's nothing overly complex here. And we'll be looking into this a little more when we type it out. So let's take a look at the fragment program. Just like with our texture map, we do the same with our normal map and we create a texture. We use a text2d sampler node to basically unwrap our texture over the coordinates. Unity stores the norm map in the range of 0 to 1 in the alpha to green channels. So we multiply it by 2 and subtract 1 to get it into the negative 1 to 1 scale. This will allow for the normal bump in both the positive and the negative direction. Take a look at your normal maps. You'll notice that the default color when there's no normals is um, 0 0.5 on the blue. Well, it's 1 on the blue, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 on the others I should say. So that's what we call the halfway point. To get the z depth in that, we actually dot product the texture against itself, half it, and subtract it from one. Now this here is how it is done in the Unity um, documentation, uh, and also on the introduction to CG in Unity wiki book, which is a great read, I would recommend getting a copy of that. But, however, I feel that it's almost the same to just set it to one. In this tutorial, we're going to do the official method and do the dot product, but you can set it to one with very little difference. And you can even actually attach a slider to this local chords.c and get a control over how bumpy your, how much your normal is affecting your mesh. So now we have the normal map vectors, what we can do is we can use them to rotate the original normals to get the map. First we need to create our own transform matrix. So we're going to create a float 3x3 three three matrix, I'm going to call it local to world transpose, and this one here is going to, to pertain the tangent world, the binomial world, and the normal world. These three basically just control how it works. So um, we're going to rotate the x, y, and z, and we need the x, y, and z in a transpose to do this. This will make a little bit more sense when I give an example on the next page. So this way we can actually multiply a normal map by our matrix to get the new vectors. This is actually very hard to understand, and I understand that it's probably very hard for you to follow along so I did prepare an advanced and example. So here's our line. Our line is normalize, multiply the local chords by the local to world transpose. Which equals this. We have normal direction x equals local chords x times tangent world. This will rotate the x axis or the tangent direction. And then we have local chords y times binomial world. This will rotate the y axis. And then we have like a chord Z times I normal world. And this one here is a Z actually, which is a depth. The matrix just take just makes things a little more efficient. Just like how we use object to world or the world to object matrices to convert vertex position. We can use matrices to change normal direction. You can create matrices for any number of things when you need to multiply several float threes by a single float three or several float fours by a single float four. An example of this is of course normals and you can also use this for colors when you want to get some more advanced color effects. Okay so now it's time for the practical exercise. This has been a complex one but now we've covered the, the theory it's time to put it into practice. Now what I'm going to do is unlike what it says here I'm not going to write a normal map shader from scratch what we are going to do is we're going to take our previous shader and add normal mapping to it. Now I know that um, we'll be re rewriting shaders a lot so I've decided that we're actually just going to append to our shader rather than going through the entire process of writing out those lighting models every time. If you would like to um, learn more about writing lighting models, I'm happy to help you out at any time. I'll be re-explaining a lot of the theory lesson as I write the shader, so don't worry if none of this made sense. Hopefully it will soon.